This video demonstrates how to set up an EIP address for IFM's Effector Dualis O2D vision sensors. In order to set up an EIP address, we must start with changing the setup in the O2D sensor itself. To begin, open IFM's Dualis software, click on Connections, and scroll down to IP address. In the window that appears under Saved Bookmarks, click on the sensor Camera 1, then click Connect. Next, click on Applications on the left. Click OK. The application mode closes the current application. Click on the Global Sensor Settings tab. Both Trigger Input Debouncing and External Selection of the application have to stay off. Next, go to the Network Parameters tab. Make sure that the IP address matches your local IP address with the exception of the last set of digits. Click Assign in the right lower corner of the screen. Click Yes to assign the changes to the existing bookmark entry. Click Yes again to overwrite the bookmark. We do not want to reboot the sensor at this point. Click No. Click the Process Interface tab on the right. For Process Interface, check the option Ethernet IP. For Protocol Version, check Version 2. For Output Format, check ASCII. Click Assign. Click Yes to reboot the sensor in order to apply the changed parameters. This may take about 30 seconds. After that time, click OK and see if it's ready to connect. On the upper bar, click the first icon from the left. It is still rebooting. Keep in mind that it is possible to connect entering the address manually. To do so, click on the tab Connections. Now type in the IP address and click Connect. Next, using the button on the left side, go to your application. On the bottom of the screen, click the tab Process Interface. Click on the application and then Edit. After that, click on the Process Interface button on the left. Click the TCP IP tab and Change Settings. In the new window, click On for Results Output, On for Model Detail Output, and click OK, and this window closes. In the main window, click Next and set trigger type to TCP IP. After that, click Next again. Just to proceed through this screen, click Next, then OK. Before the system saves the application, it prompts for testing. Click On for Test Application, and right after that, Off for Test Application. Now click Next and Yes for saving changes to the application. The window with the application appears again. All necessary changes have been made. In order to disconnect the sensor on the top bar, click the second icon from the left. To confirm, click OK. And we are done setting up the sensor. Close the window. Now we must set up the PLC. The next step is in the RS Logic software. Once you set up the general PLC settings, selecting New Module on the Ethernet file, New Window appears. This will tell the PLC how to communicate with the sensor. Type in Generic. Select the line Generic Ethernet Module and click Create. Fill in the blanks in New Window. O2D Data for the name. SINT for the format. And enter the IP address of the sensor. Our input is going to be 101, the size is 450, output 100, size 450. Configuration 1 and 0. Click OK. 10 milliseconds as requested packet interval is good. Click OK again. On the left in Controller Organizer at the bottom, I highlighted what we just added. Click on Offline in the upper left corner and scroll to download. Please note the warning message that pops up. Click download. Click yes to change controller mode back to remote run. In the upper left corner, remote run, run mode, controller IO are marked green and there is no error message next to the module that we just set up. Now we are going to send the sensor a command from the PLC. 
click on Controller Tags file in the Controller Organizer. A list opens. Click on the output data and open it. Next, in the column Style, change Decimal to ASCII. In the column Name, there is still the old command. There are four tickets, and in the rows below them, capital T, a question mark, and the carriage return line feed. In order to trigger the sensor, one of the tickets needs to be changed. I am changing the one in the fourth line to 2. Next, go to the input lines in the first column under Name. Open the input lines, then go to the column Style and change Decimal to ASCII. In the column under Value, we can see the tickets. Now they match what we sent. We see rows marked with letters forming the word Start, and below that rows saying Pass. This means that the application passed correctly. The data below the rows with Pass are the details of the application. Scroll down until you see the word Stop. The data between Start and Stop is the information we receive about the application. In order to use the data, in the upper left corner, click on Remote Run and select Go Offline. Once offline, go to the Main Program folder on the left, then to the Main Routine folder and start using the data. You now have the proper connection for accessing the sensor data from your PLC.